do this without you. No matter what you choose, you'll come out bloody. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. I know you've all been waiting for some new Witcher since they dropped the teaser trailer back at Comic-Con. They just dropped some new footage, so we'll break it down. We also have more details about another big Comic-Con panel happening at the end of the month where they'll be dropping even more footage. So if you're brand new to my channel, I'll be doing Witcher videos for all the episodes. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. Because this is a really big deal, I will do giveaways in all those videos, either for the book series or for the games, whatever you guys want. All you have to do to enter those, just be a subscriber and leave your favorite Witcher moment on the video. Starting with the footage, they open with the Butcher of Blaviken scene. It's the same group of scenes that they put in all the trailers, just slightly different versions of what's going on during this moment. The reason why they're hammering down so hard on these scenes is because it's such an important part of Geralt's backstory. He's called the Butcher of Blaviken, but it sort of ties in with the theme of the show that sometimes the monsters are not the worst thing. Sometimes people are way worse than the monsters he's hired to fight. There's no better example of that than the people that are involved in the Butcher of Blaviken, both sides. Geralt sort of gets caught in the middle of this conflict between two different groups of people. It gets a little complicated, but technically he's protecting Stregobor, this sorcerer who's kind of a terrible person himself from this mob here, but the mob themselves are justified in wanting to kill him. It's just that the things that they do, the links that they go to when they're trying to get him are so extreme that Geralt is forced to try and stop them. I think this is all made better by the fact that Lars Mikkelsen is going to be playing Stregobor on the series, which I feel like is perfect. He plays some really, really great, terrible characters. He played a great villain during Sherlock. So quick history lesson. A long time ago, Stregobor hired Geralt to get rid of a monster inside the kingdom that he was currently serving. Once Geralt completed the contract, instead of paying him, Stregobor reneged on their agreement and convinced the king that he was a charlatan and had Geralt run out of town. So already pretty terrible. During this period, Stregobor is a firm believer in the Curse of the Black Sun, which is a prophecy foretold by a mage that the end of human civilization will come at the hands of 60 girls born during or after certain eclipses. So Stregobor, believing that he's doing good things, goes around full mad scientist vivisecting all these young afflicted girls that he believes will turn into mutants, drowning entire countries in blood. They go around picking girls, it's implied that they wind up killing a bunch of innocent young girls in pursuit of this goal, so everyone kind of hates Stregobor to begin with. He's already proven through his actions that he's not that trustworthy when he ran Geralt out of town without paying him for his contract, but now he's chopping up all these young girls who he thinks are going to turn into mutants. Stregobor is eventually sent to a different kingdom called Kraden because of the queen's suspicions that her daughter, named Renfri, was born under an eclipse and is going to turn into a monster. He spied on her, conducted all these tests, and was convinced that she would turn into a mutant, so he hired a cutthroat to take her into the woods and kill her. The cutthroat sexually assaulted her, but she was able to fight him off and escaped. Many years later, the queen of that kingdom wound up dying under mysterious circumstances. Stregobor suspected that it was Renfri who had escaped and come back for revenge. Many years later, they crossed paths in a different kingdom and she tried to kill him. He protected himself by turning her into a slab of crystal and throwing her down a mine shaft, causing a cave in. Eventually, she was rescued by a prince from a neighboring kingdom and continued her quest for revenge against Stregobor. Many more years go by, Stregobor has gone to a different town now called Blaviken and taken up residence in a sorcerer's tower begins serving the local populace. Geralt winds up there on unrelated business. Stregobor asks Geralt to kill Renfri, saying that it's the lesser of two evils because she's completely off the chain in her quest for revenge. Renfri and her gang arrive in Blaviken searching for Stregobor. She appears at his tower giving him an ultimatum, come out voluntarily or she and her gang will start killing all of the people in the marketplace, all these innocent people that are walking around here in this scene. Stregobor is a coward. Of course, he refuses to come down. So she goes back to her gang, getting ready to kill all these innocent town folk. When she comes back to her gang to begin the job, she finds that Geralt has already killed most of her gang members. They begin sparring and eventually he's forced to kill her in order to protect all these innocent people in the street. 
Stregobor sees everything from his tower, is super excited that Geralt has taken care of this problem for him, comes down and wants to take her body to experiment on it, because remember, the whole thing that set this off is because she was born under an eclipse and her mother, the queen, thought that she would be turning into a mutant eventually, so mad scientist sorcerer Stregobor wanted to experiment on her body, but Geralt refused the request and said that he would kill Stregobor if he touched her body. So that's why Netflix keeps showing you footage of this scene, because it's such an important idea for the themes of the show. Sometimes people are worse than the monsters that Geralt's hired to fight. And even though there are some really terrible people during this first season, there aren't any real clear villains, because it's just bad people and worse people going after each other. And then you do have some monsters that are genuinely terrible that he definitely has to kill. The Witcher book series is very different from A Song of Ice and Fire Game of Thrones. There's no Night King, there's no White Walkers, there's no group of people that you could point to and say they are the most evil group, everyone else has to band together to fight them. It's really a bunch of separate groups of people that are all pretty terrible. This is Ciri with the Dryads in their forest that's near Sintra. This looks like it's happening after she escapes while the Nilfgaardian army is invading. There's a couple really big conflicts happening in Sintra, but they're compressing the timeline of the books. So Ciri goes on the run when all this craziness is happening and she winds up here by accident, but because of her elder blood, because she's one of the most powerful people in the series, the Dryads also want her just as bad as the Nilfgaardians do. This is Hunchback Yennefer before she joins the Brotherhood of Sorcerers. This is after she's been through her training. You can kind of see the transformation that she goes through. These scenes of her in the desert seem like a fight scene when she's using her new powers. All these shots of Geralt in this keep or broken down castle seem like they're from the same sequence of him being hired to get rid of a Striga or another monster like he fights in the opening cinematic of the first game. Here's a clip of that, it's actually a pretty fantastic scene. That was meant to be Princess Ada, daughter of King Fultus of Temeria, but if this is really that Striga, then the timeline would be a little bit off, but like I said, the showrunner said that they had to change some of the timeline from the books and the events to make the storyline a little more linear and cohesive for the series. Best example of that is making Ciri way older than she is in the books. For instance, in all the scenes where you see the Nilfgaardian army destroying Sintra, she's only supposed to be about 10 years old, but here, like when you see her with the Dryads, she's a teenager. And the actress, Freya Allen, who plays Ciri, is about 18 in real life. I believe she's playing Ciri just a little bit younger than that, but still way older than book Ciri. This seems like a scene of Ciri or Pavetta, her mother, using her powers. Ciri, through her mother, has elder blood, making her one of the most powerful characters in the book series and in the games. One of her abilities is she can teleport, like you see her looking confused in this giant mystical tree in the desert. She doesn't know how she got there, like maybe she accidentally used her teleportation powers. This seems like her mother, Pavetta, using her powers. Maybe that's Dooney next to her there. This is Tessaya using her powers. She's the woman in the Brotherhood of Sorcerers who takes in Hunchback Yennefer and magically removes all of her deformities and begins her instruction in the magical arts. It's sort of a nightmare version of Hogwarts. There's some big sacrifices that Yennefer is forced to make in order to attain her powers. This just seems like her getting into a fight in the street. And then they end, obviously, on that same shot of Geralt all potioned up, getting ready to fight this giant monster. So just a reminder, the big London Comic Con panel with the showrunner and Siri is happening at the end of the month, but that's separate from the special video game conference that's happening with the writer of the book series. They didn't say which of those panels they're dropping the next trailer at, but Netflix will post it online, so of course I'll do a video for it when they drop it. It'll be sometime that weekend, and right now the expected release date is either going to be later in November or sometime in December. They've already got a couple of Netflix things that are premiering around Christmas. There was information that supposedly leaked out last month saying that The Witcher would drop around Christmas at the end of the year, but then Netflix came out and said that that was inaccurate, so it might be some other week during December or late November. 
Of course I'll do videos for that, history, bonus videos, lore videos, just like I would do for Game of Thrones. If you have any special requests for Witcher videos, just let me know in the comments. Everyone click here for my Witcher Comic Con trailer easter eggs video, and click here for my teaser trailer for the Game of Thrones prequel series. Thank you so much for watching, everybody stay awesome, I'll see you guys tonight.